10,000 years. Can you imagine 10,000 years is just beginning, isn't it? All right. When we all get to heaven. <clears throat> Good morning again. Glad to have you at our service this morning. You're visiting with us. We're glad you're here with us to worship our Lord and Savior. Hope you come back to be with us again. And if you have a bulletin, we will look at the, uh, the announcements that we have in there. Of course, we've talked about Ryan and Marissa's going to have a, a new baby boy, another baby boy coming. And uh, out front, there's boxes there set up for things there. It says Pampers and Parents' Choice, Unsend Wipes, everything, everything's in there, what you can choose from, you can bring to them, give to them, all right? Going to have another senior citizen's outing, uh, 65 and older, going to Pizza Inn in Mountain View, and the sign-up sheet is out there on the bulletin board out front, right out here up front. So if you want to go, be sure and sign up, and uh, you go over there and eat a lot at the, the pizza buffet over there. Also, we need uh, helpers for the Children's Church on Sunday morning. And if you're interested in that, can help out. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet down here at front, and you can talk to Miss Evelyn and you can talk to Marissa if you you know if you had any questions about what you you do. So that, uh, pray about that, and if you could help, it sure would be appreciated. And of course, it talks about the mess, things going on in the church. We've uh, been some fixing up with the painting of doors and fixing doors, and you can see up here this morning it's a little bit different. You can hear yourself walk up here but anyway there's some construction going on so uh, just excuse that for a little bit until everything gets fixed all right next sunday july the 31st is fifth sunday we'll be having our communion service that morning and also we're going to have a second quarter business meeting following our service next sunday morning and going to have a regular sunday night service at six next sunday 
Is there any other announcements that need to be made, Ms. Joni? Okay. Christmas in July. I see that on TV a lot. Anyone else got an announcement? Okay, we have any prayer requests we need to mention this morning. Not any to be mentioned. I'm going to ask Kenny. You lead us in prayer this morning. Lord, we thank you for this day that you've given us this uh, time, Lord, that we can come to your house and study from your word and we can learn from your word, Lord. And we're so thankful, Lord, for all that you've done for us, for this church, and, and for our uh, individual needs, Lord, and just uh, give you praise. Amen. Revive us again. <clears throat>
special music this morning. Okay. Good morning, y'all. We're going to do a couple songs for praise and worship this morning. Just sing with us.
so thankful to be able to be in your house this morning and to be able to worship that beautiful name. And we thank you so much for all that you've done for us and all that you continue to do. Please open our eyes, ears, and hearts this morning to your message and help us to hear what you want us to hear. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, praise the Lord this morning. God is good and all the time. So good to be back with you folks. It's been two weeks since I've been up here. I don't know if you missed me, but I sure missed you. Missed your smiling faces. You know, God's been so good to us, amen? He's better than we are to ourselves, amen? God is good. Would you stand with me for just a minute? Would you stand? We've got so much to be thankful for. There's an old song that says, God is so good. God is so good. 
I just want to sing that this morning. I want to hear you sing that this morning because God is good. Amen. Sing it with me. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to sing he answers prayers because he does he an answered prayer. Would you raise your hand? Amen. Maybe a mama prayed for you or a grandmother prayed for you. Amen. You're a result. Maybe a spouse prayed for you. You're a result of an answered prayer. Amen. God is so good. There's one more verse to this. It says he's coming soon. He's coming soon. Let's sing that, all right? He's coming soon. a moment. And I want you to worship him in the way you want to worship him. I mean, if you want to raise your hands, you raise your hands. I know we're Baptist folks, but I'm going to tell you what, the Bible says without holiness, we shall not see the face of God. And I'm going to tell you what, we, we, there got to be some holiness in us. Amen. And I don't, I, I've, I've been called a holy roller before, but that's all right. But if you want to raise your hand, we're going to sing God is the good one more time. If you want to raise your hands, you raise your hand to worship him. Whatever you want to do. Some people just cry when they worship the Lord. But you worship the Lord this morning in truth and in spirit. Let's sing that again. God is so good. Thank you, Lord. you say praise the Lord and be seated this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I tell you, it's so good to see all these different age people out there singing God is a good. Brother Ravon up here, probably one of the oldest people in this building. But he's proven, God has proven himself to Brother Ravon. He's proven himself. He can say God is good. You know, it's one thing to be maybe real young and say God is good, but to be 92, 92 years old and say God is good, that's proof, amen. He's been tried, he's been tested, amen. And God is good. Maybe you've got something you want to share with us this morning, a word of testimony about the goodness of God, some praise report. Maybe you want to stand and share that with us this morning. I want to give you that opportunity right now to do that. Anybody want to stand and, and share a word of testimony? Brother Ray.
Amen. Someone else. Yes, Sister Judy. He's good. Continue prayers for Martha. Anybody else? Yes. Thank you for sharing that. They're from Tennessee. And then we have some folks from Texas sitting beside them that they're the new owners of the Ruthie Curtis house. And so they're visiting with us this morning. So be sure don't let them get out of here without shaking their hands or at least bumping knuckles or something this morning. But it is good to have them with us. And thank you for sharing that. Anybody else want to share anything with us this morning? The Bible says that God inhabits the praise of His people. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of things we could brag on, but there's not anything better than Jesus to brag on. Amen? Well, we'll go ahead and dismiss for Children's Church at this time. Children's Church, some of them's already got a head start. I mean, right out of the gate. Huh? Oh, you need that? All right. <laughs> All right, just stay right there for a second. Okay, so I don't know if you really know what it takes to do children's church all the time. I don't know if you understand what goes into planning children's church all the time. Even though your curriculum is right there, it takes more than that. It takes someone to study it, to plan for it, to get be ready for those kids when they go in there. Marissa felt the Lord leading her to do that not long after Brother Tyler left. I went in there and started doing it, and then she came to me and said she felt the Lord was calling her to do that. And she has done an excellent job. These kids can't wait to get in there every Sunday morning. But today is going to be Marissa's last day until after the sweet boy gets here and he's going to be here real soon so i just want to tell you thank you there is no way we could have done this without you stepping up to the plate and following the leadership of the lord and doing what you have done and i just want us to give her a big round of applause of thank you of gratitude
Well, as I've previously said, it's so good to be back with you folks. COVID for a week or so, and then we had a little planned outing, my wife and I. And uh, it's good to be back where God has placed me in the missus. Uh, it's, I don't actually call it home because home is, well, it's, it's home, as you know. But I tell you what, this is my second home, and it has been for some 14 years, and I don't really see myself anywhere else, but uh, it's good to be back with you folks. Today we're going to be looking at three passages of Scripture, three passages of Scripture, Ephesians chapter 4, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and then we're going to look at Galatians chapter 5. And so if you have your copy of God's Word, maybe on a tablet or a phone or maybe in book form, if you want to be looking up those passages of Scripture... We'll be looking at those. Normally I have you to stand as we read our text, but today we're not going to do that because we're going to, looking, we're going to be looking at these three passages at different times during the message. Now, I say it's good to be here today, but what would be even better than being here would be to be here and feel a fresh touch from God. Amen? You know, we need to be like Jacob when he wrestled with the angel of God. And he said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. You know, Jacob, he needed some joy back in his life. Jacob, he needed peace back in his life. He longed for the wind of God to move across his life. And I dare say this morning that some of you, the people right here under the sound of my voice, you need the mighty wind of God to move across your life, to put some joy back into your life, to put some peace back into your life. You need a fresh touch from God this morning. Amen. I want to tell you as your pastor, I need a fresh touch from God this morning. You know, too many times we... Become like the people of a city I once read about. It all started when somebody discovered a spring that had a chemical in it that actually healed types of sicknesses. And so word got out about this spring that was discovered and people came and they built houses around this spring. So many houses that they became a town. And then they built hotels. And then they built stores. Everywhere people were building and building and building. So many buildings were built that the town was no longer a town. It became a city. It became a big city. One day a visitor asked, Where is the spring from which this great city was built from? And those who live there they said, sorry, but we really can't tell you. See, somehow in the midst of our progress, in the midst of our improvements, we've lost the sight of the spring. And now no one knows where the spring is. And today I want to tell you, First Baptist Church of Calico Rock, we have beautiful buildings. God has blessed us. We've got a nice budget and we have nice and wonderful programs here at First Baptist Church. And if you're looking for a church, we'd love to have you here at First Baptist Church. We've been doing some wonderful improvements and, and, and some things up here on the stage. You know, we've got to put a second coat of paint on this. We've got to put new flooring now. We've got a lot of things. We're, we're making some improvements. We're going to replace the lights in here and, and, and different things of that nature. And, and, and I believe God's house should be, should be the most beautiful place in the whole town. Amen. I believe God's house should be the best. Amen. I believe that. Don't get me wrong. But let me say this, in the world in which you and I live today, it's easy for us if we're not careful to lose sight of the spring and focus our mind on all these things and not think about the spring. We need not to forget about the source in which we're living, the source in which we're worshiping, the source in which we're here today, and that source is Jesus Christ. Amen. I finally got some amens out of you this morning. Amen. That source is Jesus Christ. The truth is this morning, some of you need to return 
do this bring? You need a fresh touch from God. Some of you may need to experience God's touch for the first time. You may be here and you've never been saved. And you need to experience that touch for the very first time. The good news is you can experience it today. Amen. God is still on his throne. Amen. God is still the God of salvation. Amen. God is still the God of healings. Amen. God is still the God of restoration. Amen. He's still on the throne. And he's still in business. And you can experience the wind of God blowing across your life even today. And so that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. Experiencing a fresh touch from God. Let's pray before we look at our first passage. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for the privilege to come and stand behind, Lord, this sacred desk and preach and proclaim your word. Lord, I thank you that you love us so much. Lord, that you died for us and that you've prepared a place for us. Lord, thank you for his salvation and eternal life. Lord, now as we've come together to hear your word, Lord, let it speak to our hearts. Lord, let it change us into the very image of Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you praise, honor, and glory. We exalt your name, for it is the name above all names, and that name is Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. So, take your copy of God's Word and join me in the New Testament in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. I want to show you briefly this morning from God's Word how to return to the spring. I want to show you how to experience a fresh touch from God. A touch that is going to refresh your walk with God. A touch that is going to renew your worship of God. A touch that's going to rejuvenate your witness of God. Because we're going to be looking at these three passages. I'm not going to ask you to stand. But let's read Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 together. If you have that, say, I have it, Pastor. If you don't have it, I'm going to put it on the screen for you, all right? No excuses. It says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Come on in, brother. Your wife's right up here. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. I'm going to read that one more time. Let it kind of sink in. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. By whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So first this morning, if you want a fresh touch of God in your life, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Now listen to me. When you first receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you turn from a lifestyle of sin and repent and receive Jesus into your life, that is repentance, turning, turning from, go in this direction and you turn and go this direction, that's what repentance, when you receive Jesus Christ, when you turn from a lifestyle of sin and you receive Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and your Savior, something supernatural happens in your life. And this supernatural event that happens in your life is the Holy Spirit of God enters you and He comes in and He lives in your heart. In other words, He takes up residence in your life. And here in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, Paul tells us when that takes place, that the Holy Spirit seals us forever. In other words, the presence of the Holy Spirit is God's guarantee that we are His forever. Those God saves, God seals. And He seals us until the day either we meet Jesus at the rapture or we meet Jesus at the resurrection. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 19 and 20 says this, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, 
and that you are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. That's pretty plain. That's pretty plain. He is God within us. The Holy Spirit is God within us. And the Bible says that it is possible for you and I to grieve the Holy Spirit. It's possible for you and I to grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, what does it mean to grieve the Holy Spirit? Well, the Greek word here, translated from Greek into the English, but the original Greek word in our text means to cause sorrow, to cause grief, to make sorrowful. That's what this word means. And you know what? As I thought about this, I said to myself, no wonder so many Christians look so gloomy. I mean, they look like when you, when you see them, they look like they're trying to sop. Y'all know what the word sop means? I'm from Mississippi, so... You know, I mean, I speak country language pretty well. And the word sop, y'all know what sop is. <coughs> sop is when you take your biscuit and you sop it in the syrup, right? But do you know some Christians look like they're trying to sop the bottom out of a churn with their bottom lip sometimes, amen? I mean, they look like they've been weaned on dill pickles, amen? And today's your birthday, Kelly. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, Christians sometimes have the biggest frown on their faces. And I thought about this. No wonder. No wonder they look so gloomy. No wonder they act so gloomy. No wonder they have very little joy in their life because they've grieved the one that actually produces the joy in their life. The Holy Spirit is the one who produces joy. They've grieved this person, this person, the Holy Spirit, who has produced this joy. You say, Brother Kevin, what in the world do you mean? Do you remember the passage of Scripture that talks about the fruit of the Spirit? A couple weeks ago, three weeks ago now, I think I mentioned it in my message. We talked about it then. It's found in Galatians chapter 5, long about verse 22 and 23. And we're going to read that a little bit later on in the message this morning. But it's the Holy Spirit that produces, the Bible says, it's the Holy Spirit that produces love, joy, peace when he's not being grieved. It's the Holy Spirit that produces long-suffering and kindness and goodness when he's not being grieved. It's the Holy Spirit that produces faithfulness and gentleness and self-control when he's not being grieved. It's the Holy Spirit. Now, some of you want to know, all right, Brother Kevin, how can I grieve the Holy Spirit? You know, I, yeah, it's important that I not grieve the Holy Spirit. How can I grieve the Holy Spirit? Well, first of all, you can grieve the Holy Spirit by having unconfessed Zen, unforgiven zen in your life. You can grieve him by saying, all right, Lord, you can have this area of my life, and you can have this area of my life, you can have this area of my life, but now there's one little part of my life that, you know, I'm going to keep for myself. There's one little part of my heart here that I'm going to keep for myself. You can't have that now, Lord. You can have all this other stuff, but there's one little area I'm going to keep for myself. And when you do that, you grieve the Holy Spirit. You grieve the Holy Spirit. And then we wonder why is there no joy and no peace and no hunger for the Word of God, no purity in our life, no burden for lost souls. How can there be when you're actually grieving the very one who produces those things in your life? So confess your sins to Jesus. I don't care about hearing them. I mean, I don't have any power to forgive them anyway. So, I mean, you know... You don't have to tell the preacher because I can't forgive you. I can pray for you, but you need to confess your sins to Jesus. Amen. Have no unconfessed sin in your life. You need to confess your sins to Jesus. And you need to give your life totally. You need to surrender your life totally, every area of your life, to Jesus Christ. And that will allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life fully. And you will not grieve him. So, 
don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Then secondly, if you want a fresh touch from God, do not quench the Holy Spirit. First of all, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Secondly, do not quench the Holy Spirit. We'll go to our second passage of Scripture. And actually, it's already up there on the board. The, the verse is actually is word for word in my Bible, just what that point number two says. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. See, not only can you grieve Him, but you can also quench Him. Now, what does it mean, Brother Kevin, to quench the Spirit? Well, the word translated quince means to suppress. It means to stifle. It means to extinguish. It means like putting out a fire. You know how like they extinguish a fire. That's what it means to quince the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something this morning. You'll never experience a fresh touch from God if you're grieving the Holy Spirit by having unconfessed sin in your life. And you'll never experience a fresh touch from God if you're quenching the Holy Spirit by suppressing and stifling and extinguishing the fire of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. What happened to my amens this morning? Maybe it's old me's, right? If you're not saying amen, maybe it's old me. you right at me. You're stepping on my toes, preacher. Well, preacher, how does this happen? How do I quench the Holy Spirit in my life? Well, I'm going to tell you. One of the ways we quench the Holy Spirit is by saying no when God says yes. By saying later when God says now. See, when the Holy Spirit's tugging at your heart and He says, give your heart to Jesus. Don't wait. And you say, nope. Guess what? You've just quenched the Holy Spirit of God. When the Holy Spirit says to you, dedicate your life to full service, a full Christian service, and you say, well, not now, maybe later after I sow my wild oats a little while. Maybe then I'll think about dedicating my life to you completely. Guess what? You've just quenched the Holy Spirit of God. My friend, are you quenching the Holy Spirit of God in your life? Maybe when the Holy Spirit tells you, you need to be witnessing to that lost person that you work with every day, that you come in contact with every day. You need to be witnessing to him or her, and you need to talk to them about receiving Jesus Christ. And you say, wait a minute, Holy Spirit, the time just isn't right, okay? The time is Maybe I'll offend them if I mention, mention to them about Jesus. Guess what? You've just offended. You've just quenched the Holy Spirit of God. Or maybe when the Holy Spirit says... You need to be tithing. You need to give a tenth of what the God has blessed you, what God has blessed you with. You need to give a tenth. And you say, there's no way I can do that. There's no way I can survive if I give an offering to the Lord, if I give a tenth to the Lord. There's no way we can survive. We're just right there right now. Guess what? You've quenched the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. I've learned through the years, my friend, you may think you can't afford to tithe. The truth of the matter is you can't afford not to tithe if you're a Christian. Amen. Because he'll open the windows of heaven and he'll pour out a blessing upon you that you cannot receive. Amen. It's happened in my life. And I know I can go all around this room, person after person, and tell you, that'll tell you, God is true to his word. Amen. I'm going to have to be careful not to get down back here. Back, back there this morning, we've got John running the cameras. Uh, our regular people are out. And uh, John, thank you for doing that. I told him, I said, I'm going to try to just stay still up here this morning. That way you won't have to move the cameras around too much. But uh, if I get out of frame, you know why it is this morning. But anyway, do not quince the Holy Spirit. Maybe when the Holy Spirit tells you, you need to teach Sunday school. Or maybe you need to help with the WASH program. You say, Lord, I'm not going down there with them hundred kids every Wednesday. Those hundred kids will drive me crazy. But the Holy Spirit says, you need to be down there helping with that WASH program. You need to be putting the Word of God in the hearts of these young people. Maybe that's what the Holy Spirit tells you, and you say, I, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. Guess what? You have just quenched the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. Amen. You've just quenched the Holy Spirit. If you want a fresh touch from God, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't quench 
the Holy Spirit. Don't pour gold water upon the fire of God. And then lastly this morning, the third thing, if you want a fresh touch from God. Oh, there's my towel right there. I've been wondering where my towel was. We move things around here. All right, praise God. Number three, walk in the Holy Spirit. Grieve not the Holy Spirit, quench not the Holy Spirit, and walk in the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5, 16. I put it up here on the screen. If you got it in your Bible, we'll read it. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Do you see the word walk there? Do you see the word walk in that verse? Paul is actually using one of those present tense verbs there in that word walk. And that literally means walk in the Spirit and keep walking in the Spirit. Not just on Sunday, not just on Wednesday, but walk in the Spirit every day of your life. Walk in the Spirit and keep walking in the Spirit. That's what he means there with that word walk. Now the truth is this morning... Every one of you that are listening to me here in the sanctuary and those of you who are listening via Facebook Live, YouTube, and on social media, the truth is we are either walking in the Spirit or we're walking in the flesh. Every one of us. We're either walking in the Spirit or we're walking in the flesh. You say, Preacher, how do I know if I'm walking in the Spirit? Or if I'm walking in the flesh. Well, in the same chapter, Galatians chapter 5, Paul gives us the answer. He tells us in verses 19 through 21 of Galatians about those who are walking in the flesh. I'll read it to you. Here's what he said. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outburst of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Walking in the flesh. And then Paul tells us in verse 22 through 26, he gives us scripture. He tells us about those who are walking in the Spirit. Here's what he says. I told you we were going to read it. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ, positive yes, possession, those who are Christ, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, or envying one another. Now in closing... Look up here. I want you to look up here. In order to return to the spring. Remember the story I told you at the first of the message. In order for us to return to the spring. In order for us to receive a fresh touch from God. You've got to become less occupied with this world. And what's going on in this world. And we've got to come become more occupied with the source of the spring. And that's Jesus Christ. Now folks, I understand there's a lot of things going on in this world. There's a lot of things. Over the last few years, we've seen so much prophecy being fulfilled and we're even seeing more of it being fulfilled every day with things that are happening in the Middle East, things that are happening with Russia, things that are happening with our own government here in the United States of America, things that we're seeing in our own communities happening I know it's easy for us to get 
preoccupied with those things. But I have to keep reminding myself that this world is not my home. I'm a stranger here. I'm visiting here like we have a pew of visitors back there. I'm only visiting in this world. We're only visiting here as children of God because we're citizens of not this world, but we're citizens of that world. And we don't need to let ourselves get preoccupied with these things that are going on. We need to keep ourselves occupied with the source of the spring. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Holy Spirit plays a big part of that. That's why we don't need to grieve Him. That's why we don't need to quench Him. That's why we need to walk in the Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is a person. I've heard people call Him it. Boy, that would really grieve. (laughs) The Holy Spirit is God. Just as Jesus is God and the Father is God, the Holy Spirit is God. And He's living inside of you if you're a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. Now, if you're not, the Holy Spirit doesn't live inside of you. But He can. He can. By accepting what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary for your sins. And repent and ask Jesus to come into your heart. The Holy Spirit will come in. You know, there's an old song. There's an old song that I'm reminded of from our home church. Now, we didn't have Baptist hymnals in our home church. We were Southern Baptists, but... We didn't have Baptist hymnals. We had a hymnal called the Broadman Hymnal. Anybody ever heard of that, the Broadman Hymnal? And when I led the music there, that's what we would sing out of. We would sing out of the Broadman Hymnal and the Heavenly Highways Hymnal. But there's a song that I remember that's entitled, Holy Spirit, Breathe on Me. Holy Spirit, breathe on me. My prayer this morning is that the Holy Spirit breathe on me. He's living there. He's there. But I need a fresh touch. I need to feel the Holy Spirit. And that song says, Holy Spirit, breathe on me. And this is going to be our invitation this morning. I'm going to sing this song. Try to. If you want a fresh touch from God, if you want the Holy Spirit to breathe on you, this altar is open. I I know we don't have a floor up here, just a wood floor right now, but you can still kneel down at this altar. I want you to know this altar is open. Holy Spirit, breathe on me.
that your prayer this morning for the Holy Spirit to breathe upon you guide you, direct you make you into the image of Jesus Christ I know I've probably been preaching to the choir this morning but mostly I'm preaching to myself I learned a long time ago as a when the Lord called me into the ministry to preach what I need. And if I do that, I know it's going to touch somebody else. Amen. Thank you so much for watching this morning. God bless you. And thank you for coming here this morning. We're, we welcome our visitors.